What's going on everybody? My name is Mike Montgomery and welcome to episode five of my DIY Shed to Workshop conversion series. And in today's video, we are doing a completely DIY solar workshop installation with goal zero. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and get started on Modern Builds. If you all have watched my content, then you know I love Goal Zero products. I used their Yeti 3000 electric generator to power my DIY school bus tiny house from last year. And when I had the idea to run my new workshop on solar, Goal Zero was who I reached out to first. I'll be installing their new Yeti 1000X along with four of their expansion battery tanks for a grand total of 5,800 watt hours of battery storage. This solar setup is gonna be perfect for lights and running tools in my workshop. So let's get started. So I imagine this being my power wall. I don't need any outlets on that side. Remember, my workshop is 12 feet wide. So if I have an eight foot extension cord, I can run anything off this one wall. I'll be able to have a couple sets of outlet boxes, one here and one down here, and we'll run conduit to connect it into the corner. I started by breaking down some three quarter inch plywood to make some floating shelves for this whole power hub. I just used some 99 cent spring clamps and wood glue to make each of my shelves two layers thick. I put the bottom shelf on little feet. This is what the extra battery tanks are going to rest on. And I mounted the top shelf for the Yeti 1000 with these right angle heavy duty shelf brackets. I can't lie, I was incredibly fortunate with how everything fit into this corner. I don't have any extra space, but it looks and functions perfectly. Next, I needed to start running all of the conduit, which I'll be feeding all of my wires through for my outlets. I'm using these square outlet boxes rather than bending my conduit anywhere I need a 90 degree corner. I like this idea because it gives me a little access panel to fix any wiring if something ever does go wrong. I can also make alterations and run new conduit anywhere off of these boxes, which will make modifications really convenient if I need to do any of that later on. Cutting conduit is really simple. In fact, it's pretty fun. I like it a lot. You use one of these really cool tools that you rotate around the pipe, slowly closing the blade in with each pass, eventually working your way through the thickness of the material. Oh, and I should mention the Goal Zero guys were out filming. And if you wanna see the video they made, I'll leave a link to that down in the description. These connectors have a thread and a nut on one side, which connect to the box and an insert screw with a little bit of wiggle room that you use to tighten down around the conduit. I used a straight connector, which I'll leave linked in the description everywhere that my conduit connects to one of these boxes. I just took my time, measured and marked in place and cut to the line that I made. I went ahead and pre-made our vertical conduit runs, which run down to where our outlets are gonna be. So this is the stuff I've been trying to avoid the whole project. I know how to use an EMT bender, but I'm not great at predicting where the bend is gonna start and where it needs to end. So let's just wing it. My workaround here for the couple of pieces of conduit that are gonna match the roof angle was to have a little bit of extra material on either side of my bend. That way, all I needed to focus on was the angle of my bend, which was around 20 degrees. And then I could measure, mark, and cut that piece to fit. As you can see, I used smaller junction boxes between all of my conduit runs for the lights, but the process is exactly the same. And once my conduit was in, I could start installing my eight foot LED light bars on the ceiling of this shed. Overall, I'll have four of these lights and I picked them up from Home Depot. They were a really good deal and surprisingly easy to install. I just spaced mine out evenly across my ceiling and I wanna give a big thanks to Justin for the help installing these. Having an extra set of hands was really, really useful. And finally, once my light bars were installed, I could run the last couple of pieces of conduit from those junction boxes and into the housing of the lights. So now it's time to start wiring, and I wanna preface this by saying I am not an electrician, I am a DIYer just like you, but I am gonna show you what I did and what I used to get good results. I learned that you're not supposed to run insulated wire or Romex through conduit because it can build up heat or static. So instead, you wanna run individual wires from the goal zero to any of your plugs or lights. I used 12 gauge stranded wire, which is a little overkill. I also learned that I could have used 14 gauge solid wire, which is easier to snake through the conduit and more convenient to wire up for plugs and switches. Snaking all of the wire through the conduit was easy for me, considering I didn't have very many bins and the runs themselves were relatively short. 
Now, if you're someone like me who is not great at electrical, I definitely recommend having a wiring diagram for whatever you're trying to do right next to you while you're working. And here's the one that I was referencing for my install. Essentially what I'm doing is creating an extension cord inside of all of this conduit that connects to my goal zero. Back in the goal zero corner before our run ends, I'm installing a switch outlet combo. And these are really cool because you can wire it so that the outlet is always on and then the switch can determine whether all of the rest of the outlets are hot or off. That means the outlets in my power corner are always on as long as they're plugged into the goal zero. That way these outlets can charge batteries and phones without the lights or the other outlets being on. Oh, and real quick, here's that wiring diagram. After my two sets of outlets were wired, I put a male plug on the other end of that lead and this is gonna plug into one of the two goal zero outlets. The lights will use the second. Anywhere that I spliced my stranded wire, I made sure to use wire cap nuts, which provide a really secure connection and it helps insulate and protect these connections. I also decided to go ahead and wrap them with electrical tape and go the extra mile. But all in all, you can really see how having these access panels are way more convenient than bins in conduit for the application that I'm using it for. Not to mention it works great and looks industrial once a cover gets put on. Really cool. The Goal Zero's inverter has overload protection. It can basically work as my breaker panel, so that makes all of my wiring incredibly simple. Okay, it's time to test all of these outlets. Fingers crossed. Snaking and wiring the lights were really easy, especially once I had already done the outlets because each step here was either the same or easier than what I had done prior. All you have to do to be successful is wire white to white, black to black, and mount your ground to the chassis of the light. I'm actually going to take a second and promote my podcast, The Modern Maker Podcast. If you're interested in listening to a show all about building and DIY, the link to that will be down in the description. We put out a new episode every week. And finally, it was time to test the lights. And they worked right away. So awesome. And now a word from our sponsors. I want to give a big thanks to the sponsor of today's episode, Squarespace. Squarespace is your one-stop shop to design and build a completely custom website all yourself with zero website building experience. Squarespace's library of built-in designer templates look incredible out of the gate. If you can upload images and edit and drag text blocks, you are well on your way to a one-of-a-kind website. In fact, about a month or so ago, I made an entire tutorial on how to build a Squarespace online store. And if you're interested in checking that out, I'll leave a link down in the description. Squarespace templates look great on desktop, tablet, and mobile, no matter where your customers find you, and have all kinds of features and functionality, including no limit to the number of items you can sell on a Squarespace store. So if you're interested in learning more, make sure and follow the link in my description that's squarespace.com slash modern builds, where you can build out your entire Squarespace website before entering any of your credit card info. And then when it's time to make your new website live, make sure and use the code modern builds for 10% off your first site. One more time, that's squarespace.com slash modern builds for your free trial. And the code is modern builds for 10% off your first site, store, or domain. Thanks Squarespace for sponsoring today's episode. Now back to the build. Now that wiring is complete inside of the shed, it's time to put some solar panels on the roof. We've got four of these 100 watt Balder 100 panels from Goal Zero, and they're going right here in the corner. One of the awesome considerations that Goal Zero always designs with is modularity and portability. These panels are super lightweight and just have a kickstand so you can put them anywhere. But since I want to fix them permanently on the roof, I removed that kickstand and I put on these mounting brackets by drilling a hole in the side of the panel where I wanted them to go and bolting them down. It was that easy. 
Now, if you tuned into episode four of this Shed to Workshop series, you saw me put on this new sheet metal galvanized roof. And underneath, I have a framework of purlins, which are one by four boards. And I wanted to make sure that my mounting brackets always screwed into this new material. I also made sure to use a ton of silicone caulk everywhere I had a screw going through my roof. That way it was waterproof permanently. I spaced out all four panels evenly and got everything as straight as I could considering that my roof itself isn't a perfect square. And then I used this four-way splitter cable to connect all of my panels together so that I have one plug that feeds down and connects into my goal zero. I also needed to drill one hole through the side of the shed so that I could feed that wire inside. And you'll notice the little bit of loop to where the wire goes lower than the hole that I drilled. That way any water will run down the wire and drip off rather than flowing into the hole and inside of the walls. I did need to install this charge controller though since I'm using the Goal Zero along with these expansion tank batteries. What this does is direct the current first to my expansion tank batteries, keeping them float charged. And from there, those batteries charge the onboard battery in my Yeti 1000. Otherwise, the solar panels would be charging directly into the Goal Zero, bypassing and not charging the battery tanks. All these are pushed to connect. So the short cord on one is gonna connect to the long cord on two. That easy. And then this one goes up through here to the Goal Zero. And with that, I could hook everything up. There is one plug for the solar panels, one plug for the battery tanks, and a plug for the lights and outlets. So there you have it, a completely modular DIY solar setup that I was able to do basically by myself. This new setup for me is super functional and it's going to allow me to work more hours and hopefully make more videos. In this shot, you can see where I'm going with my battery charging corner. I've got all of my 18 and 20 volt tool batteries on one setup and those will always be able to stay charging. And on the other wall, I've got a little setup for all my lighting and camera batteries so that I've always got a full charge. Not to mention this whole setup looks really cool. I always think of my shop as a miniature industrial workshop and having this visible conduit is super heavy duty and I really like the vibe. The only downside that I've seen in this entire system is when I'm running the lights and my largest tool, the table saw, at the same time. I do get a little bit of a flicker, but the saw still cuts great. Check it out. See, I told you, it works great, and Goal Zero is not sponsoring this video. So if I end up not liking this system, I'm gonna let you know, but for now, it's working great, and I'm gonna continue putting it to the test. If you're new here, make sure and click like, subscribe, all that stuff down here. And if you're not already, make sure and follow me on Instagram, at Modern Build, so you can keep up with me in between project videos. Thanks again, Goal Zero, and huge thank you to you all for watching. I appreciate it big time, and we will see you next time on Modern Builds. Bye, everybody.